on on other media. And so it can brainwash whoever you are into thinking that that's what the other side is doing. And the, the reason I say that is because if people on side B think person A is a moron by only seeing the worst of him, and people on side A think person B is a moron because of all of the negative things set, shown to them, then in fact the people on side A and the people on side B are actually the same people. They think in the same way. It's just that it's the opposite position. But the way that they think and the way they process information is the same. The point is that because we think the same, irrespective of the side we're on, we're actually, we actually have that in common. And so it's important for us to realize that we have a lot more in common than we have what divides us. Here we go. I say that unbelievably desperately to try and stop outside forces such as Russia, China and Europe and everyone else from polarizing American minds via social media and everything else that's going on. So. Next question has always been that guy. There's no such thing as free anything. Correct. There is no such thing as free anything. So there, is a, there are bad solutions at the moment to real problems. So I'll give you an, an idea. In Australia, we have what, the equivalent of what you call a single payer health system or healthcare system. Um, something similar to that, where I can go to the doctor 100,000 times if I want to and it's free. And anyone can go and it's free. Um, is that amazing for the person receiving the health care? Yes. Um, how is it paid for? It is paid for via a very bad solution, which is that the Australian government is raping and pillaging its own country to sell off its natural resources to India and China to pay for the medical health system, as far as I can see. Okay. In Great Britain, the National Health Service is not even getting paid for. Basically, it's, it's going bankrupt every year. It's right. It's losing, losing. It's insolvent if it was a company. So, so they have the benefits of people not dying for stupid reasons like they do in America sometimes. But they have the disadvantage that they can't pay for it. The other side is this side where the benefits of America naturally, because of the way the free market works, wealth, not income, but wealth gets funneled upwards. And that's because... It's, it's a combination of disposable income, the marginal propensity to spend, fixed costs, and profit. And when you add them in within, without getting into a huge amount of detail, um, is that it actually, everyone gets money. So a capitalist, a pure capitalist system, you know, with, well, not pure, but the way it is in America at the moment, which is partially socialist, but mostly capitalist, um, is so an unintellig unintelligent capitalism. It means that everybody is better off right? But the ones, but wealth gets funneled upwards, which means that the higher you are up the financial chain, you are going to get wealthy as if, and yes, you can oscillate between being in the top 10% and the top 1%. But if you're in the bottom 20%, yes, you can go into the bottom 30%. So you can slightly move upwards, but it's more linear. Whereas the higher you are, it moves exponentially. So that is a problem. And if you the, the issue there is that you get societal disconnects. So the, the people at the bottom who don't get the proper health care develop a huge amount of resentment for those at the top. And the people at the top have the benefit of the country. So the country itself is a huge part of the reason that they're successful. Now, of course, they have other temperaments. I'm going to get the chats in a sec. I've just paused it. But there are other parts of that. Of course, you need to be highly intelligent. You've got to be a hard worker. You've got to have a good family upbringing. You've got to have intellectual wealth, wisdom, um, you've got to have your health. There's a lot of things that go into being successful. So it's not just that it's the country. But if you want to be rich in a certain country, you need the country. You can't be the richest American if America collapses into civil war. Then your richness means nothing. And this part I know because I had, I had my uncle in Lebanon who had $50,000 in his bank account. And by the end of the civil war, that same 50,000 was still 50,000. But the Lebanese pound, instead of being worth the same as the Australian dollar, um, it, it is now you need 1,500 pounds to make one US dollar in Lebanon. So his money just turned into nothing. Okay, um, His land was, you know, very, his land stayed, but then he had to sell it off to, to live to eat because he couldn't make enough money. So in other words, you don't want that to happen. So there is a balance between the two. OK, you, uh, you know, trade and profit create disproportional wealth, um, but flattening out the economy causes decentivization. So you need a, a, some sort of balance. Now, America doesn't have that balance 
very well because as we can see, we're getting a huge amount of societal problems and people at the bottom are getting accused of being weak and lazy and all of these things when in fact there are a huge amount of other variables. So if you don't have access to proper health care, when you get sick, you take a day off work, which means you earn less money, which means you can't cover your repayments, which means you might, and then you get a speeding fine, you can't pay that, then you can't go to court because you can't take a day off work, you then lose your job, you go down to zero. That, that's, it's a very dangerous rabbit hole that exists in America now, which should not exist. So, so to answer just plain Skippy, how do you pay for single payer? The answer is not with money on its own. So yes... I absolutely do not agree personally that anybody, including myself, right? If my mum works her ass off and makes tens of millions, I do not agree that I should get that money just because I'm her son, because that's aristocracy. I'm happy to get part of it, but not all of it, right? But the government is also corrupt. And, and even if it's not corrupt, it's inefficient. And so if the government takes the money in taxes, a lot of it gets wasted on things that we don't want. And so people don't want to pay taxes. So there's a lot of complication in there. But the way to fix that is, number one, yes, that we pay more taxes and that we clean out corruption. So those things are important. And it's also important that we reduce the cost of healthcare, And we reduce that with technology. And when that technology is produced, that it is shared amongst every single citizen of the country. And hopefully the world, once we can get there, because we are all human beings. And it's not right that I can sit here and you can sit there when there is a literally right now, you know, two million Syrians out of the civil war sitting in Lebanon, right, bleeding the Lebanese economy dry so that they can live in tents and, you know, they're getting diarrhea and everything else. That's a disaster. So that's my answer to that. There's no such thing as free anything. Correct. And so there's a price to pay either way. If you get rid of socialist policies, which we do have, we have a lot of socialist policies. If we get rid of them all, like Medicaid, for example, and you just say the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, you get India and Lebanon. So at the moment, Lebanon's hyper-capitalistic. It means that the most successful get more successful and the less successful just die off and are bleeding and begging on the streets. There is no middle class. So a middle class, the strongest middle class we've ever had was at the time when the marginal tax rates in the US were up at 90%. Um, <clears throat> So there is a relationship between those two. It doesn't mean that that's the solution, but there is a balance there and reducing costs is also there and education. Correct, it's not free. No, it's not free. There is a price to pay either way. If you, if you reduce, if you make capitalism less intelligent or in other words, without socialistic tendencies, then capitalism will also have massive problems because the rich will get richer at the price of the society. This is, I'm going to be very clear to summarize in hyper capitalism, the rich get richer at the expense of the society. So the society pays. Okay. In hyper socialism, um, the society becomes more equal at the expense of uh, the, um, the benefit of the individual. Okay. So either way, there's a price to pay. There is no such thing as a free anything. It doesn't matter which way you go. There's absolutely a price to pay. And that's the thing that we as we haven't evolved as a Western, you know, a community to talk about this properly and to say it's there's a difference between an opinion. So a, a bias and where my thinking takes me. So if I didn't think scientifically, my bias would be socialism. That doesn't mean it's right. It means that's how I feel. OK, so I feel like I would love to give everything I have to everyone else and we all have equality. Okay. But I know that scientifically and historically and pragmatically and financially and morally, it doesn't work. It actually doesn't work morally, even though it feels good. It doesn't work. So therefore I can't go that way today, but it's what I want. So that drives me to find solutions to go that way. Now, someone who has a bias towards the individual is going to say, I want it to be all about the individual. But science tells us that also doesn't work because when everything is about the individual, the society suffers. So you have both ways is a price to pay. And it's important that we have both of us together. So Ernie Banks might focus more on the individual. I might focus more on the community. But it's important because he can see where the individual would suffer under what I would want. And I can see where the society would suffer on something he might want. And together... We, we can accept that we want something 
And then we've got to figure out how we get closer to it. And there, so there should be an argument. You know, Ernie Banks and I, as an archetype, let's use ourselves as archetypes, we should actually be disagreeing. We're supposed to be disagreeing. And we should actually be arguing, not, not, not as in a, in a hateful way, but in an adversarial way, so that we can drill down in each other's weaknesses to get to a better solution where everybody is satisfied, the individual and the community. Um, but we don't do that. That's what's broken down in America at the moment. So let's keep going. What's the state of Oz medical care? Uh, medical care in Australia is amazing. We get everything we want, which is which is brilliant. And I'm very lucky because I wouldn't have had the treatment for autism that I get um, if it wasn't for that. So wealth is created. You're right. It's a hybrid system. Dystopian society, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, they made two billion in two years, and Google bought them. Yeah. Um, I pray there's no civil war. Yeah. Imbalanced wealth distribution. Yes. Always pulls in the money every 10 years, as I say, 10 years up and 10 years down. Yeah. Government replace societal care. Yes. Have you ever met government? They suck. I agree only because my definition of the government is the people. And any democratic socialist, I think, sees it that way. So when, see, this is a funny thing. Um, why do a lot of MAGA people come on my scope? And I think one of the reasons is that they know and I know we agree that the government is a corrupt and you know ridiculous vehicle. But when I say that, for me, that's not the true government. To me, that was a government that's hijacked the real government. The real government is the people, is us. And we together in social democracy require ourselves to have these discussions constantly um, so that we can together, collectively, um, guide ourselves the way we want to. Now, the thing is, you cannot have a collective without the individual. So in my definition of social democracy, it's not the American weird version. It involves the individual. You cannot have a group without the individual. So the whole point is that the individual does not suffer because of group identity, but the group doesn't suffer because of individuals who want to go against uh, the, um, the, the what's in the interest of everybody else. And that is the true government. The true government is all of us, communities, um, you know, uh, charities, foundations, us talking on Periscope. And by setting up foundations, we can bypass the government. We don't need to pay you know, all of those taxes if we're putting the money into foundations and we're doing it as a community. Um, but you know, there's an issue with awareness. So if you live in Texas, it's going to be hard to know exactly what it's like in Detroit. So that's a problem where we need communities, maybe interstate communities, which is what the government tried to do, but it becomes corrupt. So you have all of these problems. Uh, Galaxy probably hasn't produced a working model of either system of pure form. Correct. Well, the Galaxy, actually, just to get back to it, the Galaxy has produced hypercapitalism. Um, and what does that mean? That means that the biggest black holes get bigger, the biggest galaxies get bigger, and the smaller ones die off. In fact, in fact, hypercapitalism is is actually a phenotype of the Pareto distribution. And the Pareto distribution is how the galaxy, how the universe works. Um, it works on the fact that 99.99999% of stuff dies off so that the fraction survives. And even evolution works like that. Everything does. So the natural free market will become hyper-capitalistic. And that's the whole point of why there are so many socialists around. Now, they, it's because they recognize that problem, but they don't know how to solve it. So a lot of people go out and scream and say this. There are very, very intelligent, like Do Dr. Richard Wolff, I think his name is, very, very intelligent Marxist. And if you hear him, he talks like what I'm saying. Um, and, you, and you might be a MAGA supporter and think, I'm not going to listen to a Marxist. But then you listen to him and you're like, shit, he's right about, because he's just saying what I'm saying, all of these critiques of, of the problems that we have. Um, so, and he's, and he's actually, he doesn't tell you to be a Marxist. That's the beautiful thing about it. It's about using the Marxist lens to actually critique what's happening in a hyper-capitalistic society. And that's the way I like to see it. Um, I don't want people to go to a belief or a cult or whatever it is or some stupid stuff. There's a difference between Marxism and Marxist think, Marxist thought. So Marxism is more of a religion where people don't even know why they're Marxists. I don't consider myself a Marxist. I consider myself a Marxist sympathizer. And what I mean by that is that Karl Marx's solution 
has been shown to be an absolute murderous disaster when applied by humans at the moment. But his diagnosis of capitalism was correct. And that's why it's still so pervasive, because he pointed out problems that we all see. It doesn't matter who you are. We, we can see. I have no hope for mankind. <laughs> well, you know, we might have to transcend being humans because our prefrontal cortex is not big enough for our adrenal glands at the moment. And that means that our lizard brain, thanks to our hormones, can kick in very quickly. And when we get angry, our prefrontal cortex just shuts off. That is not the key to success. You know, every time we get angry, we actually regress to our chimpanzee self. It should be the opposite. When we get angry, we think clearer. But we can't do that as humans yet. And the point is that we need to try to do that as much as we can. Take deep breaths. Take anger management therapy. When people sit down and watch TV, right, you're actually paying a price for watching TV, which is you're not taking anger management therapy. And as just plain Skippy said, nothing is free. Getting horny, absolutely. And that's why there are so many stories. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Getting horny, getting hungry, getting tired, uh, getting angry, you know, everything. You know, it's, and we're not in touch with that. May fail due to bad execution. Absolutely, absolutely. So Pompous always says when it comes to communism, I'm here for dumpable offenses. <laughs> you missed out, my dear. Um, what did, what did Pompa say about communism? What did he say? He goes, nice idea, wrong species. <laughs> uh.